right? The director cut. Okay. So <laughs> when we're talking team Ohio and OEC, sounds like there's a lot cooking right now. And I, I love the things I'm hearing right now. I I'm, I'm hearing Kerry Colat's name thrown around, around a little bit as to, uh, do some clinics and get, get the OEC placers involved. But when I look at team Ohio, OEC defense, soap, uh, barbarian apparel, I look at a winning, uh, you know, some winning teams and obviously some of the better clubs in Ohio coming together, but Jared, Jody, who wants to lead off and tell me about what's going on here and what the premise behind team Ohio and OEC is. Well, go ahead, Jody. You kind of, you kind of yeah. reached out to me a few years ago. We're like, yeah. Honestly. So there was an, um, an organization, just a kind of a group of dads that got together to create it for, they created the Ohio national team and it was great. It, it ended up happening for a while, but you know, when, when um, we have great dads that can put, put great teams together and, you know, get market and get into tournaments while the kid ages out. Right. So when they had that team, one of the challenges was when your kid is now a freshman in high school, they're not running the junior high anymore. And when your kid's in seventh grade, they're not running the grade school anymore. So there's a lot of turnover and it got a little rocky for a while. And then, um, you know, with COVID, the team kind of dissolved. So there was a couple different things going on with the team of not necessarily having all Ohio guys on it and just challenges with running it, which I can totally understand the challenges that they had. So I spoke to Jared a couple of years ago about, hey, maybe, maybe there's something else that we can do. Maybe we can use um, the credentials of guys, guys and gals going through OAC and going through that process because our state tournament is not easy at all. So if they're placing top eight, top five, you know, that they're very deserving to be um, on an, an Ohio team, Ohio, Ohio national team. So we wanted to kind of, we've been wanting to do this now for the last couple of years. And, you know, with COVID, obviously it gave us a whole year in planning to start putting some pieces together to form a committee to kind of do it the right way of folks that are not biased, um, that are unbiased coming in and making sure that we're working with uh, coaches and directors and having uh, paid coaches on staff and kind of take away the stress that it would to a dad who wants to have um, their kid participating at the highest level. But then when you also look at it, I mean, with Burnett Train, we've been traveling nationally for years. I travel nationally with my son all the time and um, Ohio can compete. And there's absolutely no reason why we should not have a team of Ohio guys and gals that are eighth grade and under creating junior high grade school hybrid teams, why we're not there, why we're not competing, why we're not in the gold pool, why we're not giving Pennsylvania a run for their money, why we're not giving other um, like Buxton and, you know, Powa and Cali Gold, like Ohio can definitely roll with those guys. You know, want to know why? Because they ask Ohio guys to be on their team. <laughs> we have our guys wrestling for other teams at these national events when we very well, have the structure, uh, the capacity um, to be able to do it on our own. So we're very fortunate um, to just be able to have people like Guy with Defense Soap and, you know, Jared with OAC and even partnerships with Barbarian to be able to get brainstorm, get our heads together of how to do this the right way. Because uh, we all know wrestling, we always say it all the time, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. So what are we doing with this program to continue the journey for these kids, that it's not just a five-year deal, that it's legendary, it lives on, you know, like my kid does it and then like his kid does it. Like it's still there 15, 20 years from now. What does it look like in the sense of location, practices, training situations, travel situations? What are the tournaments you're going to target to take the teams to? Where do the kids train? What does a lot of the logistics of it look like? Yeah, so, so first up, we have um, you have Kerry Colat coming in in May of a defense soap, May 16th. Then up at uh, in Milan, we have Nathan Thomasell coming in June. Um, and then right now in July, um, not final, but we're looking, right, Logan Steber, is that right, Joey? Yeah, we just have to con confirm the final yeah. date as a committee, but yeah. um, he's looking to help us out. So that'd be in central and then towards and end of the month, we're looking at July 31st would be the team trial date. So, um, you know, those final few guys, you know, a small bracket to determine who's on the team, you know, so there'd be, you know, in a sense, a, a small, a small bracket with those guys that meet those. A mini tournament. Oh, yeah. that? A, a mini, exactly. mini tournament. Yep. Yeah. Just to kind of exactly. do that finalization. 
Yeah. It's pretty cool because it um, gives them. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jerry. No, go ahead. No, you're good, Jody. Go. Uh, it, it just gives them an opportunity to keep training with the best. And then some of the kids, you know, maybe they did place eighth and they're invited to come, or maybe they didn't place, but they're still invited to come. Um, they may not make that team, but my gosh, they got a great summer of training with the best kids in Ohio. So it's good for the whole state, let alone developing that team. So they'll have those training sessions where um, our committee and our head coach, uh, Dave Riggs, will be able to kind of assess the kids based off of the stated criteria um, and how they, uh, how they work and develop in our combine system. Then with that tournament, we'll be able to seal the deal on that team. And then August, we're looking to have another camp uh, more mm -hmm. focused with who the team players are, right? Who who are uh, who are more defined um, on those on the team, and then in September, October, we're going to start wrestling right away. So we're looking at um, uh, we're looking at uh, uh, Columbus Day duels, right? yeah, Battleburg, Day, middle uh, school, national, national middle school duels, right here. That would be really yeah. fun to win that with Team Ohio and uh, Virginia Beach duels uh, or Virginia Holiday duels. They have multiple. I call it VAC. There's like a million names for it. McDonough. Yeah. Um, we're, we're just, we're just blessed to already have relationships with those, um, with those organizations that they've allowed Team Ohio to come in. Um, it's great. And it's not going to affect, um, our clubs. I know one question that I had been getting, you know, with Jared, with OAC and with Guy and defense, and then Jody is, the, I, this is like no representation of Burnett train, Burnett train is still going to go do their own thing. If there's kids that qualify, if there's kids from Defense Soap or West Shore or Sandusky St. Mary's, like if they qualify to be in the running for this, then they're in the running for it, the same as everybody else. But those other clubs will still have opportunities to go. This is not going to take away from anything that current clubs are doing. It just gives um, kids more options and to create more of an elite team and then have other kids have other options to go in their clubs. Right. Elite team coach. You, you mentioned coach Riggs. It's yeah. Yeah. Some of these dads don't even know. Who, it's the funny part. Crazy part, right? Some yeah. of these dads don't even know who coach Riggs is. And it's, uh, we're pretty blessed, you know, first year getting him, uh, he offered to coach the first year. So we're, we're super excited about that. You know, these kids are, and the dads don't even know what, what kind of coaching they're going to be getting. So, um, yeah. and we're trying to finalize the final two coaches, but we want to have three coaches, you know, that are leading the team and, um, you know, we have some, some candidates and, you know, so we're working on that as a committee and, and we're super excited. It's, it's off to a good start. Obviously we're still in April here, but um, mm -hmm. you know, first camps around the corner and, um, and I'm, I'm super excited. Yeah, we are. We've um, I feel like, I feel like we should have a call every day. Something else comes up. We're constantly texting and emailing and, you know, it's the first year. So there's going to be things that develop along the way. Um, things that we do this year, we may not do next year, right? It's our first year. There's growing pains with every uh, first year. I know it's come up like, hey, is there a girls team? You know, this year, there's not a girls team. All of the female wrestlers are invited to participate into the combine and get into the tournament, especially if they qualified top eight in their divisions. Um, but that's just one more team that we have to worry about one year that we don't have the funding for. So we want to really get our feet under us to make sure that when we do this, that we do it well. Um, and we had the spots for the junior high and grade school. So it's just easy to combine everything. One question that I've actually gotten, Zeb and Jared, I know you got it too, is what, what's this going to look like financially for the wrestlers? Because mm -hmm. traveling nationally to these tournaments, I mean, I do it. I have a whole little budget set aside for that because mm -hmm. it does get expensive. Um, but the, the wrestlers will pay to participate in the combines. So each combine will be a, a dollar amount. Um, and then from there, once they are picked to be on the team, their tournament fees and all of their gear is taken care of. And then mom and dad just got to get them down there and pay for their food. So and that's, hotel, that's right? really yeah. it. Yeah. And we'll get hotel blocks. So it's a little bit cheaper for them. Um, but that's really nice because sometimes some of the gear is the most expensive thing. So we're blessed to have partnerships with Barbarian to be able to have some really cool stuff uh, for them. And the gear is really cool. The gear is sick. It's the gear super is cool. Sweet. Yeah. yeah yeah this is the barbarian hour if you didn't know uh so who's barbarian yeah. i've never even heard of them before we, we, we feel pretty <laughs> strongly about what josh sasby and barbarian apparel is doing in the cincinnati the greater cincinnati area the ba center is in cincinnati proper so i'm guessing we'll see some training situations arise down there i can see he does open mats he just had tyler graffin 
yeah. for a two day camp. And, uh, yeah, Josh, Josh does it right. And, uh, I mean, yes, to Julius and out of a hat. Palacio coming up there. And, uh, yeah, that's the plan May, actually. Right? And, um, the plan is August to have one down at, at the VA center. So mm-hmm. yeah. the August yeah. camp. That makes sense. Yeah. His, his room's a little bit more intimate. So we, it, to have our whole combine there, um, isn't the best situation. We'd have to split the room too much or split the sessions. So his space, especially with his partnership. And because like you said, Deb, he does do things right. He does, does right by the sport and does it for the right reasons. Um, we made, we thought it made a lot more sense just to have kind of that unit of who's going to be competing at that camp. Definitely. Uh, so right now, when we talk about qualification for it, what is the qualification process? You know, you've talked about it's top eight, right? And then there's going to be a, a team trial to get see who the, the, the finalists for the uh, team, Team Ohio OEC are, are going to be. What was the qualification process? What was just the foot in the door initially for the athletes? Uh, for the criteria, we're looking yeah, at top criteria. eight this year. And then mm-hmm. Jared, um, you just you just finished all the stuff for registration. Can you go over the rest? Yeah, like the so top eight this year and kind of the, Yeah, go back to 2019 if we have to. But this year, you know, you know, we expect to get the best kids. But obviously, um, you know, whatever reason, if kids are doing other sports, whatever it may be. But this year's criteria is, you know, the what we're looking at. And if we have to go to 2019 state placement, we're going to go to that. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and then see what kind of participation, you know, at these combines, you know, we, we told them it's expected that they're there, you know, we, we expect them working mm-hmm. as a team at these combines and that's what we're going to take into account, you know, being there with the team, working out with the team and then, um, you know, a mini tournament, you know, in July uh, to just see who's, mm-hmm. you know, the number one guy who's number two, three and four yeah. and, um, you know, that's the plan. I think we're also, we're also um, looking at, um, uh, I'm so sorry. It's at night and you guys are talking to me. We're also looking at, you know, like super 32 free, uh, preseason nationals to free USA folk style nationals. So we are looking at some of these higher level tournaments as well. Cause we're going to have guys that, that come in and, you know, maybe they're division four, um, 90 pound state champ. And then you have a seventh grader, 95 pound state champ, but the seventh grader beat the other kid at super 32, you know, like, so there's going to be some, some assessment with that too, but we, we are, we're looking for kids to have participated at those events so that when they go to these national duels, that they understand what they're walking into. Cause as hard as our state tournament is, I know when my son goes to some of these tournaments, it is, they're brutal. They are brutal. So I mean, national middle school duels. That's one that I work with Dom and Don D'Amelio and, and his crew there, they've been, I've been partners with them since the, the inception of the tournament and gray took a couple losses there oh, and he won a crazy yeah. overtime match. But yeah, you know, when you look at it like that, uh, <laughs> it's really tough. I think he was seven and two. Oh maybe. my gosh. The, there was one year he got three, tech fault. I couldn't. Yeah. That's it's crazy. You go right down the street and there's a great opportunity for my kid to get his butt kicked. And that's why he trains the way he does. And that's why, you know, he wants to go to the tournaments that he does because it just makes him better. You know, taking a loss this year is going to give him another win next year. So, um, so that right there is a testament of what these kids will be walking into. Um, that they're and but mil, middle school national duel is a little bit different though because they do eighth grade and under. So it's K through eight. It's everybody, and that will be the only tournament that Team Ohio does is what I would call that hybrid. All the other tournaments, there is a specific junior high team and a specific grade school team. So those kids will have more opportunities. That's the only one that we'd have to merge for. Gotcha. Gotcha. That makes sense. Where are you in three years, Jody? Probably sitting here talking to you at nine o'clock at night. What do you think I'm going to go? I'm just saying your son's done with this and this year, next year, and the following year. Yeah. Well, that's what's years. really cool about this. Um, I have been doing a couple, you know, I've been doing a lot of administration for Burnett train over the years. And, you know, with, with Janet's, my sister-in-law, Eric's wife, with her kids get a little bit older, like she's been able to phase out a little bit. Um, so I've been kind of handling all the back end stuff, which I am still doing. I just transitioned out of Perrysburg youth wrestling. We, I was the president of that board for a while. So I was able to transition out of that. So this is, believe it or not, is, 
as stressful as it is probably going to be. And Jared's like, I can't believe you're going to say this. This is actually easier than doing all that other stuff because we have a complete process in place. It's via paper, it's black and white. So it doesn't matter if I'm now um, or if Gray's in college, like I can still do this. And it's going to get easier after year one, yeah. I think. Right. Yeah. And we, I think this we'll, is we'll definitely learn this a long term. Yeah. Unless Jared right. fires me from my free position. I don't know. <laughs> free position. Yeah. Yeah. But this, I mean, it, this makes sense for me and my love of wrestling and being involved in the sport. Um, I, I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. And it doesn't matter if my son's participating in this at this level, he could be in high school, but this is where I, I, I love working with guy. I love working with Jared. I have a great relationship with Josh. Talked to him like four times today. And, <laughs> um, I just, I think it's a good place to use. It, we're, um, we're all in it for the right reason. Not yeah. that, you know, it's, it's. Yeah. And it's then we know what the Ohio impact wrestling. can make, right? We know the yeah. impact it's going to make. So Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. So. Yeah. It sounds like a winner guys. I can't wait to go and cover some of the uh, clinics and practices and mini tournaments and all that stuff. It's always fun to, to see the, uh, the future Ohio stars as far as high school and college go, and you can catch them at the youth and middle school level, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Love it. Uh, you got anything else for us on this? Anything else you want to talk about? Any BTW news coming up? Any camp Did stuff? See that sign? Is that maybe look at that sign? Is that, oh, is that have you that seen this sign. line? Haven't you? Our I've seen that sign. That's a sweet sign. It is That's a so sweet cool. sign. That's Our boy so cool. Eric Saberg from Wasion. Uh, he got that made for Scotty couple while ago for Christmas or for his birthday, which is birthdays by Christmas. So whatever, it could have been for either one, but it's sweet. We love it. It's like the nightlight when all the kids sleep over down here, but yeah. I see, Burnett, Kent State, got, I see yeah. something Kent state in the background. Oh. Oh. What is that? Back right below the, the sign, right below the sign, right below it. Oh, that's yeah. my, um, below third year? my third year. What are you talking about? There's a right below the BTW sign. There's a Kent state plaque or something. Oh, that's Kent State, Nebraska, and Iowa Central logos. Oh, that's where Scotty and I, went. I see what they did. Sassy. There. A little sassy. Nice. Yeah, we um uh yeah, we got a camp coming up in May. Um, so weekend camp Friday, Saturday, freestyle. We're in major freestyle Greco mode right now. It's been a really cool year. We've been able to add Greco at both our sites. We've had Greco out at our Perrysburg site uh with Kevin Contos, and um now we've been able to add a Greco night. And on Wednesdays in Milan with Gary Howell, who's a great, great coach for us to have St. around. St. Mary's grad, St. Mary's grad. That's a, yeah. Yeah. He's I uh, I don't know if anyone's Bear ever Bear. met Gary. He's a good dude. Yo, dude, if you ever meet him, he's got, does he still have his like Mohawk mullet thing going on? <laughs> Zeb, you would know him if you saw him. He's oh Corey's my God. Age. He's, he's, cool he's a big, tall brood of a guy. And you'd walk down the street and be like, damn, I don't want to be in a dark corner with him. And then you talk to him and he would do anything for anyone. And he's so sweet. He's so great with the kids. And he's he, awesome. He's just, uh, that's something that Burnett's haven't been able to do. We've been more of a freestyle club. So last couple of years, introducing Greco, uh, most of our guys are doing new WWs this weekend in Wisconsin Dells. And I believe half of them are doing Greco, um, which is super cool. Let's talk about that. How about UWW starting that U15 uh, Pan Am games, they can do a world team for Pan Ams. Um, and then that futures division, it's just super cool. There's so many new things happening with freestyle and Greco for the youth level, um, which, you know, at Ohio's we're trying to get after it here. It's slow to get these little guys involved when they're in other sports and we want to encourage them to be in other sports. Um, but I think, I think USA wrestling and UWW is doing a good job of trying to get the younger guys in. So we're excited. It's going to be a tough weekend this weekend too. Yeah, is that Dells, Wisconsin Dells? Yeah, to the Dome of Hell is what I call it. It's is so it hot? hot. There's hot. no circulation. Like, even if it's snowing, it's still probably going to feel like 100 degrees in there. I don't think the fan even works. Like, it's terrible in there. <laughs> yeah, I got invited to go, and I had to take a hard pass. Because it's hot. <laughs> it's hot in there. Think about yes. when they do nationals. Nationals is there again this year. And I'm not even going to go. I'll watch nationals it for TV. what? What nationals? That's uh, kids freestyle Greco nationals. They, they rotate like they do the Dells. And then they go to Atlanta. I think it's like a two to three year rotation. Didn't Gray win it in Atlanta? He won it in Atlanta. He double dipped in Atlanta. Double he, dip. he doubled up. He won freestyle <laughs> and Greco there one year. It was really cool. It was his first year competing in Greco. So he did that. Yeah, he's, he's, he's done all right with freestyle Greco. He likes it. 
he probably likes it more than he likes folk style. I think if you ask him, what <laughs> okay. a lot of fun. So what other sports is Gray Burnett doing right now? You know, you talk about the other kids are doing other sports. Your kid does more than just wrestling. Yes. Yeah. He plays lacrosse. Uh, so that's fun to juggle right now. He's got two to three days of wrestling, two days of lacrosse plus games. So that's, um, it's really cool. Like Gray has a really good idea of what he wants to do with his sports and being like a young athlete and a young student athlete. And, you know, he, last weekend, he, he wrestled at the ultimate duels out in uh, Pennsylvania, but he also had a lacrosse game. So he had to decide, you know, what lacrosse practice am I giving versus what am I giving to wrestling since I'm competing at a high level this weekend. So it's really interesting to see him navigate his training schedule and he does a good job on his own. Like we don't question it. He usually makes good choices for the right reasons. Um, so it's cool. It's cool to watch him. He loves it. Still the tiniest guy out there. looks like a bobblehead. His helmet's like way too big, but <laughs> he's super small. Here, I gotta take a picture and send it to your husband. He just, your husband just called me and I, I want him to know that it's no big deal. No big hurry. Yeah. He's it's like, I'm never to... on time. But really? You're not ever on time. I never knew that about you. <laughs> you didn't know that about him. You just dove right into it, huh? Well, I think the only thing he's been on time for was the day we got married. And that's because he had a firm talking to beforehand. Oh, did he? You got a talking <laughs> firm, to huh? firm, firm conversation. <laughs> yeah who, awesome. gave, who gave him that talking who gave him that 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 good talking to who do you think <laughs> loom dog no hey have you had to go loom dog in anybody lately have you have you loom dogged anybody yeah, have you, have i did you actually yesterday i did to the lowe's installation team they really? missed my carpet installation and I got very upset because I had other things to do this week. They got it. They got it good. <laughs> hey, a little Western New York, eh? Oh my God. A little Western oh, New York. She was late jumping on. She said she was right. ripping out the floor. I was like, dang. I was ripping out the kitchen floor tonight. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so awesome. floors, you yeah. discover a lot. You discover a lot about your home. Mm-hmm. Three floors. There's three floors. Three. Sub they they floors, put yeah, floor find, on top of yeah, floor. They, there they was put linoleum I down. Did four and floors. Hardwood. Yeah. Oh, it's so dumb. It gets <sighs> just rip it out. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> the right way. Put, Why would they, you do that when you can just cover it up? They glued the crap out of it. You said. <laughs> oh, it's oh my god, it's so bad. It, uh, we had, I ripped up four floors out of the bathroom. You know, the bathrooms are small, right? You can barely mm-hmm. fit in there to rip move. them up. And there was four linoleum floors that I had to rip up. There was a lot of potty mouth in the Burnett house, more so yeah. than usual that day. You're getting after it, huh? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Hey, do you still work? Are you working online or do you go back in person yet? Um, I'm a little bit of both right now. Um, we're allowed to go back out. Um, I'm actually going to go out next week for the week. So as long as our schools lets us in, we go. So I'll start picking back up. I'll probably go every other week starting next week. Which will be cool. I think it's going to be a uh, hazmat suit. Pretty much. Yeah. No hazardous material suit. No, they're just really, um, you know, they're just really hoping that everybody uh, does their part and gets the vaccine um, and makes it a little bit easier. Since I work in schools, it's a little bit easier to go into schools when they know you're vaccinated. Um, So, yeah. Hold on. I got to see this. Hold on. Scotty wants to do the podcast from the hive. There's zero internet out there and he doesn't know how to use his phone for zoom. Yeah. I, fi- I figured we'll wait there'd for be him. something. Tom will yeah. Wait. We'll wait for him. Yeah. We're going to be like, uh, <laughs> Oh wait. Is it, who is it? It's uh, uh Mumford yeah, and son. I will wait. I will wait for you. That's an insane mo. <laughs> he is definitely. Hey, I, mean, I got to get you guys some of these. Look, look at these Both boys. Oh, oh, are those some sticks? Hey, we got a got we got it. a Perrysburg grad going there this year. Ryan Musgrove, yeah. Yeah, making right. it to good old Kent Stater. No, nice. Golden Flash. That's right. Yeah, that's cool. That's good. Yeah, good. It's good to hear it. Yeah, they need guys. You got to build depth. You got to build depth. You know what? I what I like about people like that, like a Ryan Musgrove, I can attribute from myself. Jared, you wouldn't understand this, but. <laughs> When you, um, when you don't accomplish what you want to accomplish, 
I think that's the biggest thing about um, being really hungry in college. When you're hungry and you want to win and you got a chip on your shoulder and, you know, maybe you didn't place in the state yeah. or maybe you didn't win the state, I think that a lot of people really take that uh, that uh, anger with them and, you know, they train yeah. all that much harder. So drive, that's man. what I like about that. Yeah, I think, too, um, with a kid like Ryan, you know, he was a – you talk about playing multiple sports – Ryan is a freak athlete, freak of nature, super strong, good at everything he does and great football player, great wrestler, phenomenal baseball player. Um, and, and he ended up choosing wrestling, which we're like, this dude's going to go to college and play baseball. But at the end of the day, when he assessed all three of his sports, it's the culture of wrestling and that community that he liked the most. Like he knew that that was different. And I, did, did Scott ever tell you the story about him when his like leg exploded in the middle of a football game? No. Oh my God. So what is it? Is it, um, compartment compartmental or like his muscle exploded? What is that? What is wow. that called? Um, it's a, it's like a, a spontaneous Com- compartmental disorder yes, or something. Com- compound comp- metal, whatever. So middle of football I mean, game, we can, go- we can Google that. Yes. Muscle exploded right? Wrestled. He wrestled that season. Like wow. superhuman, shouldn't Holy have healed cow. like that. Like should have lost his whole year. And he healed. Like he's a bi- he's bionic. It's crazy. He's superhuman. Hu- the bionic power. bachelor. Yes. Yes. He's, yeah, he's a freak. He's super strong. I ask him kindly not to wrestle my husband. <laughs> Can you do me a favor and take that hat off and let's have no. a discussion? No. What's going on under these there? Come I on. was just ripping up floors. I'm not uh, doing that. Is no. the curls? Is it at least curly? Does it look like there's curls right now? Ooh, it looks straight. I don't like that. <laughs> that can't go. Like so it. does Perrysburg like then it. have lacrosse or what? Do you just play for a club? Yeah, yeah. They like have, they have, uh, so they're, it's pretty cool. They run their, their youth wrestling program. They run it identical to what we do for our Perrysburg wrestling program. Um, wow. And I would say probably. 70% of the lacrosse players are actually wrestlers and Al Bagnonis is actually one of our lacrosse coaches. So yeah, I did, it's cool I to see all those guys. Yeah, yeah. They all go to like, they had a game the other night and Al just put them in the car and took them all to practice. Like it's just ah, crazy. Cool. They got to do both. Um, so it's really cool. They do that. And then they do junior high, um, for the school. And then they have a really good high school program too. So it's not club at high school. It's actually varsity sport. Oh wow! And, um, they have travel opportunities here. There's uh, black swamp, um, they have a travel club for them. True lacrosse is like a national organization. They run out of Columbus and they have a program for them. And then Perrysburg has a traveling program too. So they wow. have a lot of opportunities here for lacrosse. So what, yeah. What schools like in the, that area, do they go up like Michigan or is it, so it's a spring sport. Sylvania, right? Northview, Sylvania, Southview. Yeah. Sylvania, they both have it. Um, Maumee probably has Maumee. it. Mm-hmm. Ottawa Hills, I think. Yeah. They've got, um, they, they don't have, they're, they're not hurting us. My yeah, they're good. I mean, they can, they don't have to travel really far for the youth tournaments. It gets like, we can only right. play Slovenia so many times, but right. great teams, crazy good right now. It was, they won 18, nothing last week. Great score. Have any assists or anything? Um, he play. he's a center. Uh, he does like the draw in the middle or whatever. So he's like ground ball pickup assist guy. Like that's his, he that's runs it. the plays. Like he's at the top of the crease making sure but they're is he elusive a, what is i don't explain that to me it's elusive is he hard to catch is he hard to get a, get a uh, eh, body on? i mean uh i don't I, he's small so i think they're super aggressive towards him um but he's quick and he's fast and he makes him work for it he's elusive uh, i guess sure well i mean get, great get a, he's elusive. Out. get a dictionary out. Come no on. it's nine o'clock it's after nine o'clock i don't have to do anything about. Floor rip out time, huh? Yeah, floors are rip out. Oh, God bless you. That's not easy. How long you been doing that? How long you been ripping the floors out there, Loom Dog? Which which ones? Which room? I don't know. How long have you been ripping floors out today? Period. What's the elapsed amount of time? Oh, I only I did like maybe a half hour because we moved the fridge, so I had to rip the floor up under the fridge. I did all the carpet on the stairs last night. Sounds like school in summertime. <laughs> I'll deal what with the rest no of the fun. floor next week. Yeah. What good no stuff. fun. Uh, 
Man, I thought I was going to ask you one more question, but I can't think what it is. Where are you guys going? You guys, where are you guys going up to Michigan? Where's your trip? Oh, we're doing um, Tennessee this year. Tennessee, nice. Yeah, there's like nothing in Michigan. Nothing available. Everyone's, yeah, I think people just aren't booking, and we even like mm-hmm. try to t- contact people that we've booked through in the past that we have a good relationship with, and like no one's doing anything. Sarah and I were going bonkers. Mm-hmm. So, and then we're also brats because we always have like a secluded area with a fire mm-hmm. pit, so Zeb and Scott can be asses, and we don't have to worry about people kicking us out. And, yeah, buddy. And then I'm we sure always want to be they're close. so quiet, right? Oh, they're so quiet. Um, we want to be close to the water. So it's easy for the kids. We don't want to be at Lake Michigan because that's too much for the little kids. Mm -hmm. So we have like, we're pretty particular and we had to keep like changing our like filters of what we wanted. And Sarah's like, we could do this. I'm like, no. And then I'm like, we could do this. She's like, no, like we were being super (laughs) snotty. So we actually found a really cool place. Is it Gat? Is it Gatlinburg? Is it? I think Gatlinburg is close to it. No, no. No, is it? I think we're actually going to Kentucky. Oh, no, Kentucky. 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 Yeah. It is Kentucky. It's on a lake. Jared loves um, it. Jared loves it right now. Zach wants to it's, sing so bad tonight. I know. It's so. Oh, I'm gonna get it going. The robotic song. warlock is on the mic. No. God. When the electrical wizard. I have some some songs of Tom Miller recorded somewhere. <laughs> oh my! Bachelor. On my hard drive. It's Tom Sandy. Mm-hmm. Oh right. man, those are some classics. Hey, I was talking to my He's brother Ferd David tonight. Hey, I was I was talking to my brother Ferd tonight. We are gonna have him on. We're only gonna be able to use like maybe three percent of it, and I'm just gonna let him <laughs> spew stories. I was telling a story to T-bone? Scotty the other day. You're gonna let T Bone do it, or your no. brother? My brother. Oh, Ferd. your brother Ferd. Oh, so God. Jared, I told Scotty this story the other day. And he literally couldn't stop laughing. And I think he spit out whatever he was chewing. But one year, my brother Ferd won the Medina tournament. And my dad, and he, and he went out and he like came in late, right? And he was like, out. I don't even know if he was like partying or whatever. But so it was like New Year's Eve, probably, right? Because Medina's at the end of the year. So I remember my dad woke us all up. And he's like, hey, I need everybody to come down here. And we're like, what is going on? You know, it's like one, two in the morning. Well, Ferd was past his curfew. And mind you, it's winter time. <laughs> so my dad, <laughs> dude, this is awesome. My dad opened the, he opened the inside door, but he left the screen door. The screen door was the only thing that was open. It was the only thing that was closed, actually. And nobody does that in the winter, obviously, right? Like, it's like you have your storm door closed or your your door, you know, permanent door. You have it closed. Well, Ferd, he was like, it's great to hear Ferd tell it. He's like, I knew something was wrong because I came home and it was the middle of winter. And just the screen door was open. The other door or the screen door was closed and the other door was open and it was winter. And, you know, we heated by, uh, we, we heated by wood, right? We had wood fire, wood stove. He's like, I knew something was wrong. And he said he walked up and he said he did the old thing where he looked in the screen like this. Oh, God. <laughs> T-bone punch him in the face. Punch him right in the face. Punch him right in the face oh, through the screen. And he's like, I woke up and I was in like the snow and my face was all bloody. <laughs> Dude. When my brother tells these stories, it is going to be epic. <laughs> oh, man. Another time, <laughs> he had a tape collection, and like tape cassettes. And for every like five minutes, he was late. And he had, you know, he, dude, he had everything. He had, you know, ACDC. He had Quiet Riot. He had <laughs> Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin. He had all these things, right? And he probably had 70, 80, you know, tapes in his collection. And... Uh, <laughs> Every five minutes was late. My dad had a poker, you know, like a, mm-hmm. a poker. Right. Yeah. Logs. And uh, he'd shish kebab of tape for every five minutes he was late. And dude, he had like probably 18 or 20 tapes shish kebab on this poker. Oh my God. In like in he, the fire, like all the good like ones s'mores. too, probably. Like just yeah. In oh yeah. He did not care. Well, I mean, your tapes are ruined at that point. I mean, it's insult to injury if he decides to burn them. 
Dude, he, he was talking tonight on speakerphone, and my wife's like, you know, her original statement is, well, there were seven Miller kids, five lived. She's like, you had to have had 12 siblings. <laughs> there had to have been 12 of you. What happened that to you just seven? don't know about them. <laughs> yes. Yeah, she was like, she always says that, and it's I get a good laugh out of it. But, like, she ain't wrong. Dude, Fur told me tonight, my cousin Buck, my cousin Buck is uh he start, he went to Clay. Buck was a couple times state placer at Clay. His kid Russell's uh like in the youth at Clay. His name's Clay. They had a dunnage bag. You know the thing you put in the floating thing that people put in the the pond, mm-hmm. and then people will jump on one end and it launches you. Yeah, mm-hmm. we got one of those out in Milan. Dude, they launched my cousin Buck and he hit his head on the rafters in this fifty foot hay barn. Indoors. so it wasn't in the water they blew it up and did it in a barn in a barn and they launched him what, what was he gonna land on he landed on and i was like dude what did he land on and i'm like did he break his legs because one time they they put chad up in a, a tire swing and he broke his legs i think oh jeez, oh dude they were just I, i'm not surprised by any the of your stories not like completely mangled is unreal <laughs> Like more me, and you're all like quasi like smart and successful and like <laughs> shit together. Yeah, and, like, so funny. they must have did something right. No, I don't really know crazy. anyone in your family that's you know a dumbass right. and not doing it right. Like they do the deal, right? Yeah. So he, uh, well, did you know that they lost me? I got my head stuck in a tractor, in the clutch of a tractor. <laughs> oh, you putting your head? I, in? I, why? I put my head up in the clutch of the tractor. <laughs> why? How old were you? I was like uh, 18 months. Oh, well, that's because they forgot be about you. And that's they probably how they lost for the like, other They two lost millers. me for like <laughs> six or seven hours, and they kept walking by the tractor, and I couldn't talk because my head was wedged in there sideways. And you were and, 18 months old. Yeah, I was in a diaper. <laughs> and my brother Chad finally found me going, oh, 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 like whimpering. <laughs> so they put a cinder block underneath my feet, and you guys remember John Watkins. Uh, Johnny Watkins. Johnny Watkins. And I want to say Claude, or not John. John was his my age because he, he'd he have been 16 months old. But I think Claude Watkins and my dad had to take the tractor apart. Oh, my God. And my mom, they put me on. They, so they put my feet up because I was hanging by my neck. I was hanging by my head. And they uh, put a cinder block underneath my feet. And they, my mom changed my diaper. And they took the uh, they took the tractor apart to get my head out from out of the clutch. Oh, geez. That, does, that does explain some things, though. That it explains really everything. Does. <laughs> you guys got it. Now you understand why this is the way it is. Yeah. Yeah, and I am wondering what happened to the other children. <laughs> Dude, one time they lost me for twenty four hours. What? I first off, they put me. Yes, right around that same age, probably like couple months earlier actually got to lose you twice in a bad yeah. year <laughs> i yeah i had a bad year they uh put me up on the top bunk in the basement and i rolled off and i landed on my head you should see the scar i have a scar here still um and i landed on my head and then i rolled underneath the bottom bunk so i was on the top bunk i don't know why you would put like a infant toddler even for that matter on a uh the top of a bunk but hey i guess that's what you do i rolled off for landed on my so. head and then rolled underneath the bottom bunk and under like a wood pile and they couldn't find me mm. when they found me they're like oh no he crapped all over himself <laughs> i was covered in blood and the blood was you know if you've ever seen dried blood it's, it's brown it was yeah brown. It's brown. <laughs> well they started cleaning me up and then they had to take and get my uh my head stapled back together Oh my gosh. Wow. Did child protective service exist when we were 18 months old? <laughs> I have some interesting Tom Miller stories. Not in the I'm Miller sure jurisdiction. Oh, Was man. what did Sandy bring everybody some tea when they took apart the tractor after some she changed tea, her yeah. diaper? Brought everybody some tea, changed my diaper, got Tom a bologna sandwich. <laughs> Dude. Crazy. Um, all right, I'm gonna take a quick bathroom break. 
right. And I'll a robotic that. warlock should be here. Uh, it's just 